tonight on News Center. The band is set to perform at Heinz Field. Learn what Greek life is. And CUTV gets airtime on PCN. News Center starts now! Welcome to CUTV News Center for the week of September 19th. I'm Miriam Mason. And I'm Kat Leverfinger. The Cal U Marching Band will be helping celebrate the NFL's National Hispanic Heritage Month by performing at the Steelers vs. the Bears game on Saturday, September 22nd. This will be the band's third performance at a Steelers game. The last time the band made the trip to Heinz Field was in 2010. This is our third performance in five years, and it all started five years ago when one of our trumpet players met uh, somebody from public relations from the Steelers, and the conversation happened, and, and they were looking for a marching band that was performing a Spanish show, and we were playing a Spanish show that year, and so we created this relationship with the Steelers, and they've used us now three times for the NFL celebration of the Hispanic Heritage Month. For most students, this will be a whole new experience, and for some, it will be a chance to feel the rush again. Uh, the thing that I'm most looking forward to is that it's actually happening. When I was recruited two years ago, they had told me about all the fun that they had going to those games, and then for the first two years I was in the band, we never got to go. So I'm excited that this is finally happening. I was kind of in shock, actually, because they told us that it would happen, but I didn't think it would actually happen. So I was excited. I was making a big deal of it. We went and we got to play a concert outside, and we got to play, you know, a couple stand tunes and things like that. And it was, it was really cool, like all the fans were really digging it. And at halftime, we got to actually perform on the field. And that was just surreal in itself. I mean, I know Pitt plays on the field all the time with their band, but like the opportunity for us to get to do that at a Steelers game and then getting to watch the whole game was like, it was really cool. We're tentatively scheduled to perform at 8-12 before the game kicks off. So if everyone tunes in, it'd be great. This past week was Student Appreciation Week, hosted by student government. This is the first time our school has decided to give out a thank you to its students for choosing Cal U. With the future events and the turnout, this seems like a week that will be continuing for future years here at Cal U. Student Appreciation Week started off with Family Day. There was a bake sale, bingo, fun with friends, making seat cushions, and face painting. Monday kicked off with a chance for students to win free Run Cal shirts free smoothies, and free hugs. With our school spirit high for Cal U, the cheerleaders pumped up our spirits even more for the pierogi race. The health fair was right after the race, and students got the opportunity again to get free smoothies, get a free hearing screening, and tattoos. Temporary, of course. Chelsea Getsy, the president of student government, said that she has had the idea since March and proposed it. We have tons of organizations that help us out, including CUTV, uh, shout out, and uh, you know, IRAC, sports management, SAB, underground, cow hockey, and everything in between have been fantastic in helping us out putting this week on. Uh, but it's a huge week just to thank students for choosing Cal U, because that's what it's all about. Two cars were pulled out of the bottom of an Oklahoma lake, both rusted, caked in mud, and containing bodies. Investigators say they believe one car may belong to a teenager who disappeared with two friends in 1970, and the other car could be linked to the disappearance of another man in 1969. Debbie McNamman believes that the remains of the older car, a 1950s era Chevy, are those of her grandfather, while the other car, a 1969 Chevy Camaro, may have belonged to 16-year-old Jimmy Williams, an Oklahoma teenager who disappeared in 1970 with Thomas Rios and Leah Johnson, both 18. Former Penn State assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky's appeals are under court review by the state superior court. Sandusky is looking to have his child molestation conviction overturned. 
Sandusky claims that his lawyers did not give him proper time to prepare and that the prosecutor made remarks about Sandusky not testifying. He also says that the judge should have informed the jurors to consider the length of time it took the victims to come forward. Sandusky is serving 30 to 60 years in state prison after being convicted of 45 counts of child sexual abuse. Well, my story, I think it's pretty interesting. I found it on CNN, and they were actually just doing a routine metal detection of the town, and they found the two cars in the lake, and they went down, and they actually they contained four bodies between the two cars. So. That just amazes me. They were down there for so long, and nobody, like, like found them. Like, yeah. how deep was it? Since the late 60s. They, yeah. It wasn't even that deep, honestly. Like, they, people, mm. I don't want to say people swim in there, because I don't know that, but yeah. it's like, a town lake. So hopefully in the future I'll bring more information. So we hopefully can talk we'll find about. out what happened. Like accident. I mean, maybe. Hopefully nothing worse than that. Yeah. When we return, Santina Marin has your entertainment report. Stay tuned.